It's great to be here. Uh, I've heard so much about SACPA for so many years. This is my first time speaking to you, so I'm very excited to be here uh, and talking to you about the revenue rental campaign. Congrats, uh, Canood, on the promotion, by the way. Uh, and I want to say thank you to Canood and to Shannon Little for uh, arranging for me to be here today. Uh, it's great to be here. So I'm going to talk to you today about a campaign that we launched a few months ago called Revenue Reno. And I'll kind of walk you through the major points of the campaign. I'm going to show you a video that we put out as part of it. And uh, I'm sure we'll have lots of great discussion afterwards. Uh, everyone has opinion on these kinds of issues, I think. Uh, let me see if this, oh, that's just a laser pointer maybe. Yes. Okay. Um, so I want to tell you just a tiny bit about Public Interest Alberta uh, to get started so you know a little bit about who we are. How many of you know or feel like you know who we are and what we do? That's more than most rooms, which I kind of expected. Um, but we've been around since 2004. We were founded uh, initially out of conversations between the Alberta Teachers Association and the Alberta Federation of Labour. Um, and we are uh, made up of uh, members that exist between big organizations, small organizations, and individual Albertans who believe in the kind of work that we do. And that's really about um, making Albertans more informed about conversations around public services, about democracy, and about a clean environment. And our interest is in strengthening those services and making Alberta better for uh, all Albertans. And so our, our tagline is advocating for a better Alberta for all. So we do work in seven action areas. I'm not going to rattle them off or go, or go into detail, but you can ask about them after. And I've got some documents if you're interested in more details in each of our policy areas about what we do. But a lot of them are related to public services like child care, K-12 education, seniors care, and many other issues. Um, our task forces are groups where we bring together um, different organizations to do work on those areas. So. The work that I do is informed by a lot of organizations and a lot of folks that are out on the front lines of the areas that we work in. And like I said, our, our interest is in influencing the public discussion and putting more facts on the table uh, to have a more informed discussion, uh, which I think is the same thing that uh, you guys are all interested in. That doesn't mean you'll agree with everything that I say, uh, but I hope that the things that I say will help you to, uh, to engage in a more informed way. Um, if that's possible in a crowd as informed as you all. Um, so I'm sure it is. Um, so I wanted to tell you just a little bit about my background. Um, I um, initially got into politics, um, interested in Middle East politics. So I like to take on the easy issues, right? Uh, I jumped from that to talking about taxes. Um, but I did work for a couple of years in the office of Brian Mason when he was le leader of the NDP. I worked in his constituency office and managed that for him. Uh, that ended in 2012 and I moved on to nonpartisan work. And I've been doing nonpartisan policy work since then, first with Friends of Medicare, doing advocacy on public health care issues, and now with Public Interest Alberta since 2014. Uh, working on a whole lot of other issues. So without further ado, I want to show you the video for the revenue rental campaign. So it's a short video and I hope you enjoy it. For too long, Alberta has allowed its financial house to crumble. We've been asleep while stable revenue sources were chipped away. And we've pressed snooze on the fact that we don't even collect enough money to pay for basic things like schools and hospitals anymore. Instead, we've relied on unstable sources of money, like resource royalties, to pay for essential services. That's like hoping for a lottery win to pay your heating bill, or waiting for dear old Uncle George to bail you out of your student loan. Resource royalties are just plain unreliable when it comes to financing the infrastructure and public services Albertans need. And that means our public services are constantly at risk of falling apart. So how can we rebuild our public finances? Some people will tell you we need to run deficits. Of course, deficit spending is important in difficult times, but it's not sustainable. And if we don't have our financial house in order, those bills will pile up fast. Others claim we need to cut Alberta's public services to balance the books, but that's like paying your credit card bill by turning off your utilities. When we cut our public services, we move Alberta backward, not forward, and we don't get any closer to responsible revenue management. The only way to fix Alberta's public finances for the long term is to increase provincial revenue from reliable sources. There are several different ways to generate revenue, and Albertans need to talk about responsible taxation. For instance, a 1% income tax increase on all but the lowest income Albertans means an extra billion dollars in revenue. 
This would cost the average person an extra $8 a week. Sales tax. A fact of life in every other province is another option to stabilize our public finances. Each percentage point of sales tax could generate up to $1.6 billion of revenue, helping to pay for hospitals and schools with enough doctors, nurses, and teachers for everyone. And sales tax credits for low-income Albertans means the poorest won't be unfairly targeted. It's time for Albertans to understand that we can't rely on the resource revenue windfall anymore. We need fair, responsible taxation, just like every other province. Alberta needs to fix its revenue shortage now, so we can protect and revitalize our public services. And so future generations aren't stuck with a bigger problem. Cutting services or borrowing money aren't sustainable options. It's time for a grown-up conversation about what mix of taxation Alberta needs to fix our revenue shortage. Join the conversation at revenuereno.ca. Hope you liked it. It usually gets raucous applause. <laughs> that was a joke, but you went for it. <laughs> So I just want to uh, go through the major points of the campaign and explain a little bit more about what we need and go a little bit beyond the video. Uh, so there are three major points to it. And the first is that Albertans need public services and they need to be strengthened, not cut. Um, the major areas of services that we have, or at least the ones that cost the most amount of money, of course, are our health care and education systems. And I'm sure you've seen some of the media coverage um, over the last uh, few months or so around class sizes in schools. And, and that's an example that I like to use now because I think it's fairly well known, um, particularly in our middle-sized and larger cities. Um, our class sizes are getting to a ridiculous uh, size in our schools. Uh, I was just in a meeting with a couple of Edmonton public high school teachers the other day and they're of course just seeing their new classrooms for the year uh, one of them has 40 students in her uh, two classrooms um, so 40 students in each one they're 20-2 students which are higher needs students uh, and the other has 46 which is actually even above the rules for most schools but her school has an exception uh, and they say don't worry about it um, some of your kids are going to drop out soon and you'll be back under that 40. <laughs> Um, so those are the kinds of conversations that we're having when we're talking about our services being stretched thin and actually needing to make improvements. So Alberta's revenue shortage does need to be fixed if we're going to protect and revitalize our public services. And to be clear, we're not even raising nearly enough revenue now even to sustain the level of services that we have, let alone fix the problems that we have in our uh, systems. So up to this point, the reason why we've been able to go, go this long without uh, having this conversation about taxes, at least in a very serious way, has been that we've relied on resource revenues to pay for the services we have. Oil and gas royalties have really uh, allowed us to have a tax system that raises significantly uh, less revenue than the tax systems of any other province in the country. Uh, under Ralph Klein, gas prices were high and uh, he was able to balance the budget, not because uh, he was some you know, fiscal genius uh, I mean, he also cut services to the bone, and we still haven't recovered from that in a lot of ways, um, but he benefited from very high gas prices and gas royalties. Um, we then, of course, had high oil royalties for a while um, when oil was up over $100 a barrel. Um, folks don't think, uh, experts in that field don't think that that's ever coming back, and I'll show you some numbers, um, I think right here. Sorry, that's a really tiny chart. Um, but. Let me get my pointer here. This is a chart of Alberta's resource royalty revenue. So this includes oil and gas starting in, let's get this the right way. Uh, starting in 2009 here, just over $6 billion uh, in that fiscal year. We had a peak up there uh, of almost $12 billion in oil and gas royalties in 2011. Uh, so that's the 2011, 2012 budget year. And ever since uh, 2015, um, the highest we've been has been just over $4 billion per year. So we're down um, over $7 billion from where we were at that peak per year. And it's not a coincidence that the projected deficit this year is just over $7 billion. That's what we've relied on uh, to sustain the system that we have uh, and really to keep our taxes, what I would call, artificially low. 
So how do we fix the revenue shortage? If those oil and gas royalties aren't coming back, there are two sides to the ledger, of course, and I'm sure I'll get questions about this later, uh, but there is the spending and there is the revenue side. Um, our belief is that we want to protect and strengthen our public services, and if that's the goal, then the only way to do it is to raise significantly more tax revenue, and there aren't that many options for doing that, and there aren't any pop popular options for doing that. Uh, whether it's on the spending or the revenue side, none of the options in front of us are popular. That's why I'm not an elected politician, um, and that's why I get to talk about these things in front of a crowd. Um, this is a graph that um, in Alberta's budget documents every year, the government's budget documents is titled Alberta's Tax Advantage. Um, we've pulled some trickery here, and I've renamed it Alberta's Tax Shortfall, but the rest of it is all the same. And what it shows is if we had the same tax system as any of the other provinces in the country, so BC is here at the top, Newfoundland at the bottom, it shows how many uh, additional billions of dollars in revenue we would raise in a year uh, applied to Alberta's economy. So if we had the same tax system as British Columbia this year, we would be raising $11.2 billion in additional revenue. Um, and if we had Newfoundlands on the high side of it, um, we would be raising an additional $21.5 billion per year. Of course, the uh, uh, deficit right now is just over $7 billion. The federal parliamentary budget officer, whose job it is to uh, look at a lot of different issues, mostly at the federal level in a nonpartisan way and, and without all of the complications of electoral politics, um, last year he released a report where he looked at the fiscal situation of every province in the country and sort of gave his analysis of the health of, those, of each province's fiscal system. And he said that Alberta is structurally short $14.1 billion per year. And that means what he said is that we need either significant spending cuts or significant tax revenue increases to total this amount. And so that's, again, he's not giving a preference for cuts or tax increases, but I am. <clears throat> provincial sales taxes, now I know the zero doesn't surprise anybody. Uh, we know that at the provincial level at least, we have a 0% sales tax. We do have a sales tax here, of course. We have a GST where we pay 5%. Uh, it wasn't that many years ago where we paid 2% more than we currently do. Um, the sky wasn't falling then, and it wouldn't fall if we introduced a sales tax now. Um, again, it's not a popular thing to say, and that's why I get to say it, because I don't have to get elected every four years. Um, but these are, the, these are the sales tax levels in every other province across the country. The lowest one next to the zero uh, is Saskatchewan's at 6%. And you saw from the video, we said up to $1.6 billion per year in additional revenue. That's usually a number without mitigating it for anything, so without any uh, changes, just raw numbers. Um, we do strongly believe that the lowest income Albertans should not be um, further burdened um, when it comes to higher costs of living. And so it's very important to us that if we are to do a sales tax, and we're not saying we necessarily have to, and I'll talk about the other option in a sec, um, that we need to um, make up for that with rebates to the lowest income folks. And we have found ways to do that with Alberta's carbon price that I think are effective. There is a system, of course, for the GST with rebates, but the threshold is quite low. So it doesn't have to be the same as those systems, but we do have ways of making sure that the lowest income folks aren't the ones paying the most for this. Um, so after mitigating it for lower income folks, usually it's at about a billion dollars per year after mitigating it. Uh, in additional revenue. So really there are three paths that we can take and the first one is perpetual deficits. Um, that is what we're doing right now. We're running big deficits every year. Um, we're okay with that um, for now. Uh, in the short term running deficits is, is not a bad thing if it's something when the economy is not doing as well, if it's a temporary drop in revenue, uh, and if it's just to weather a storm. Uh, but it's becoming clear as the years go on that this isn't a temporary thing. We are actually structurally short revenue or structurally in a deficit. Uh, and that means something major has to change if we're not going to be going further into debt every year forever into the future. And so that means the first path isn't really a path at all in the longer term. For now it is, but eventually we're going to have to pick either the second path of massive cuts to public services or the third path of fixing our revenue shortage. Um, I always get a question about, well, can't we just spend more efficiently? Um, maybe in some areas, but not to the tune of 10 to $14 billion. Um, 
$14 billion is about the total amount Alberta spends every year on K-12 education and post-secondary education combined. So yes, if you closed all of our higher education institutions and all of our schools in the province and laid off everybody that works there, you could find $14 billion, but I don't think anybody wants to go that way. Um, sorry, I'm just going to take a quick coffee break. Done. Um, so that means for us fixing our revenue shortage. And uh, the only uh, other way, I mentioned I was going to go into detail or a little bit more on something other than a sales tax, the other type of tax that raises significant amounts of uh, revenue is the personal income tax system. And we do have a personal income tax system that raises less than the system of any other province in the country. Uh, not to the tune of the, uh, of the sales tax gap of the amount of revenue we're foregoing from not having a sales tax, but it's mostly middle to middle upper income folks who are paying less in our province in personal income tax than they are in other provinces. Um, the higher income folks are actually close now uh, since the NDP government did raise some tax rates on higher income folks. That's uh, the income tax rates that they raised are on people that are making about $143,000 per year. Um, so when people say that they raised taxes way too much, I don't have a lot of sympathy for that. The people that make high incomes are nice people, um, but they can't afford to pay a little bit more and we know that. Um, so if we're not going to have a sales tax, money doesn't come from nowhere, we can't just make it magically appear. If you don't want to have a sales tax like every other province does in the country, then we're going to have to have higher, uh, higher personal income tax rates than any other province in the country because you have to get the money from somewhere. And at the end of the day, I always like to bring it back to public services because we, you know, nobody loves paying their bills. And that's what taxes are. It's how we pay the bill collectively for our public services. It's how we pool our money so that we can do things together that we couldn't do as well individually. And so, you know, if I think most Albertans I know value our education systems, our health care system, our seniors care, you know, they're not perfect and we certainly need to do things um, to improve those systems. But the only way that we can do that is, or the main way that we can do that is if we have the money to pay for it. And so I mentioned already class sizes. You know, we have long wait times in some surgeries. I know knee surgeries are a big one and hip surgeries. Um, we, we really need uh, universal pharmaceutical coverage uh, in this province and across the country, really. Um, but it doesn't make sense that drugs, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, aren't covered under our health care system. They are covered under the health care system of every other developed country in the world except for the United States. Um, and we have a lot of other improvements that we need to make too. Child care and early learning is one where uh, I think the current government has uh, made some progress uh, and they deserve some kudos for that. But there's a lot more to do to ensure that our, our children's brains develop in a healthy way uh, and that mostly women who are kept out of the workforce and these are ones who don't want, uh, don't want to be kept out of the workforce uh, are really stuck in a situation where um, they can't afford child care or um, I'll tell a quick anecdote um, because I have a couple of minutes and I'm almost at the end of my slideshow, which is amazing. Um, uh, I have a friend uh, or a couple of friends that have two young kids that are both uh, in childcare right now. Uh, they're in a very high quality childcare uh, space up in Edmonton. And uh, the, uh, my friend uh, Nisha has a, a PhD in political science. I met her when I was at the University of Alberta. I don't have a PhD, but, um, but she does. And she wants to teach. She wants to use it. Um, it actually doesn't make sense for her financially to work. Um, she earns less as a sessional instructor at the University of Alberta um, than they pay in childcare fees. So the economic incentive is actually for her to sit at home with the kids with her PhD. Um, and that doesn't make sense. So in childcare, there's a lot of work to do. And I could go into a lot of detail on a lot of things uh, to do with childcare. I have some literature you can look at if you want to know kind of where we stand on that and many other issues. But ultimately, we believe that we need to take some action um, to grow this conversation in the province. I don't expect the government right now or, or a government in the very near future to just impose this in all, on Albertans. I don't think that's a democratic thing to do. I think that we need uh, a government and political parties, it's not just up to one party, to be honest with Albertans about where we are as a province, about what the fiscal situation is, and about what the options are in front of us. Uh, and that should include a description of what it would look like if we solved this with cuts. 
Um, I do believe that we should have a well-informed conversation about that. Uh, I don't think we should go the route of cuts, but I think we deserve to have the facts on the table and for uh, Albertans to have the information about uh, what the impact would be on frontline services if we went that direction. And we also need to have the conversation about taxes and what that would look like um, to pay for our public services. So. Right now, we don't have any political party willing to lead this conversation, and it's not shocking, of course. These are people that need to get elected, and we have an election less than a year from now. Uh, it's creeping up on us very quickly. Um, but what we believe is that we need to get those facts on the table, and we want Albertans to understand what these options are in front of us. And so that's why I'm here in front of you today, and that's why we've put on this campaign um, to try to educate Albertans a little more, and to try to encourage politicians to, uh, to put more facts on the table and to, uh, to lay these options out. Uh, I think the only way that we're ever going to get to a solution on this is if Albertans truly do understand the paths uh, that are in front of us. So, one piece of literature that we've got that's very, very brief on purpose is this revenue rental leaflet. And I've got a bunch of copies at the door if you missed it on the way in. But take as many of these as you want. Um, it does have that graph in it that I called Alberta's tax shortfall that shows you uh, our comparison to other provinces. And if you go on the campaign website at revenuereno.ca, you'll see this video uh, that I showed you that you'll be able to share. Uh, we've got a frequently asked questions uh, section. And I think we'll probably get into a lot of those anyway in the uh, discussion period later on after lunch, but uh, we're really just trying to get those facts on the table. And um, I encourage you, particularly if, if you see some rationality behind what I'm talking about, hopefully you do, um, engage your MLA, uh, uh, engage your politicians, regardless of political party. I know you're two in Lethbridge uh, City here, our NDP MLAs, but some of you folks probably uh, live in the outer lying areas too. Uh, regardless of party, I think it's important that every politician hears from people about this and is asked what they think the solution is to it. You know, whether they think the solution is on the revenue side or on the spending side, and regardless of which of those it is, um, what they're planning to do in some detail. And they're not going to give you detail at this point, but if you don't ask for it, then they're never going to figure it out. Um, so let's hold their feet to the fire, let's change the public conversation, and let's have a more informed discussion about uh, our public services and the connection to tax revenue in the province. So that's, I'm actually three minutes early, uh, but these are, uh, this is my contact information. I'm happy to hear from anybody anytime. And if there's any small group of folks that aren't here today that you want me to come speak to, let me know. And my job is to go around the province and have these kinds of discussions with people. So I'm happy to be a resource to any of you in the room and to provide you with any of the physical resources we can um, if you're interested in this kind of thing. So thank you so much for your time today and I look forward to the Q&A later on.